I want to use this for a foundation of scripture uh, every time I talk about this because some people happen to think it's normal to, to operate in fear. But I mean, know that, that that's not the will of God for you to be fearful and afraid. Amen. 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 Uh, 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 fear comes from the enemy. God don't want you to operate in that. And we know 1 Timothy 1 and 7 says God has not given to us the spirit of fear. 1 Timothy 1 and 7. Is that, is that, well, hold up this a minute. I'm sorry, that's 2 Timothy 1 and 7. I'm sorry. 2 Timothy 1 and 7. Now let's jump there right quick. Amen. Number one, we just want you to understand that fear didn't come from God. Right? Amen. So we don't have to be afraid of nothing. Nothing whatsoever. I don't care who comes up against you. Always remember you have you don't have to fear because God is with you. Amen. Amen. And the scripture says, God before you, who can be against you? Amen. Amen. So so don't remember, don't, don't, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. I know sometimes it's hard because that's human nature. But if, since we have the Holy Spirit, He'll help us, won't He? The, the Holy Spirit is a helper. He'll enable us to be able to overcome these spirits that come against us. For God had not given to us the spirit of fear, but of power. And of love. And of a sound mind. So we see here in, in 2 Timothy 1 and 7. Timothy said, which they said is 2nd Epistle of Paul, the apostle. Timothy, because we know Timothy was Paul's spiritual son. And, and protege in the gospel, he raised him up. He said, for God has not given to us the spirit of fear. But a power, we said the word power here is dunamis, supernatural ability, strength, strength. So God has not given us the spirit of fear, timidness, and I mean, you don't go to walk around on eggshells all day long. Uh, uh, you don't know how like, and, and you know what? I was telling somebody this uh, a few days ago. I said, God, you, you know, we, we should live in bondage in no area of our life. That means, God, when I go on my job, I'm not in fear. You, you know, I'm, I'm not afraid. I ain't, I ain't afraid of no supervisor. I ain't afraid of nobody on that job. I ain't afraid of nobody because I know if God be for me, who can be against me? How you know that? We don't need to let no form of fear put us in bondage. Now, of course, you know when you go on your job, you got to be right, right? Right. Now, you go act foolish on your job, they're going to fire you. Right. But if you're doing right and, and, and you're doing what you're supposed to do, amen, you shouldn't be afraid of nobody on their job. I don't care if the head boss walk in. Amen. I'm doing my job. I don't have no fear. I have respect for you. Amen. As a leader uh, or a supervisor on the job, but I do not fear you. I had to make that clear to a couple of supervisors years ago. You know, like I came here, I can leave here. So you, you don't, don't threaten me because I'll, I'll give you my badge, I'll give you my paper, and I'll walk out this door, and God will still bless me. Amen. But I will not be in bondage to nobody. How do you know that we're not supposed to live in bondage and fear? Amen. Now, we're supposed to reference those. The Bible says, you know what? We respect those that are in authority. But don't let them keep you in bondage. You know, even in your family, even in your home, you should live in bondage. A man should have his wife living in fear. She shouldn't be, a, a woman shouldn't be afraid of her husband. She got to walk around, you know, shaking and nervous because he might slap her upside the head or, or, or beat her up or, or mistreat her. That's a form of fear. That's a form of bondage or, or that he might talk to her negative, call her negative words. Amen. How do you know that? That there should be no form of fear in a Christian's life. Amen. And we certainly should be the ones that's ministering fear in our families, in our homes, you know, 
uh, uh, you, you know, God wants us to have peace and God wants us to be blessed. You know, and I always tell people, if, if you got to live under fear, then you need to pray. You got to pray that God would deliver that person. You, you understand? And, you know, and that's what I always tell people. You pray that God will bring deliverance, that God will set free. Uh, let God tell you what you need to do for your family. And I always tell people this. It ain't the job of the preacher to read, to, to, uh, to, to, to control nobody's house, but it's the job of the preacher to give you the word of God and, and teach you, amen, what God's word says concerning family, concerning home, concerning finances, concerning, I mean, concerning the way that a man should treat his wife. Amen. Ephesians 5, is that Ephesians 5 20? Talked about how that, and I don't know why I'm going here, how that a man should love his wife like Christ loved the church. Amen. The Bible said, No man yet hate his own wife, but he nourishes her. He encourages her. He empowers her. He don't put her down. That's the job of a man is to, to uplift his, not just his wife, but his family. Now, some, somebody called me today, and it's it's interesting. But, but somebody called me today and said, and, and, and this young man, I ain't going to call out no name, but this young man, whew, his wife is such a mess that he, he don't want to go home. He said, as soon as I go home, she nagging, she fussing, he stay out to 3, 4 o'clock in the morning until she fall to bed and go to sleep. Isn't that sad that you, amen, that, that people have to go through that in their relationship? Amen. If you're going to love one another with the agape love of God, Amen. I should be able to come home and, and my wife ought to be there to encourage me, not to destroy me. And it should be vice versa. The husband should be doing the same for the amen, for, for his wife. He ought to be encouraging. Because the Bible says a man should nourish his wife. Well, what, what do the word nourish mean? You give her what she needs. Whether it's spiritually, mentally, amen. You empower her. You encourage her. You let her know that, that she's blessed. That, that, she's, that she's favored. And, and, and I like what Dr. Miles Monroe said. The job of a man also is to help his wife, amen, to fulfill her vision. And also for the wife to help the husband to fulfill the vision that, that God has put in his heart. You know, amen. You can have two different visions to a certain degree. And a half, because God may be calling you to do this and your husband to do that. But you're supposed to walk together. You're supposed to be in fellowship. You're supposed to fight one another and be in competition with one another. Isn't that right? But the Bible says a man loves his wife like Christ loved the church. How did Christ love the church? He laid his life down for the church. And the Bible said that's the way a man ought to love his wife. That he ought to be willing to lay his life down for his family. That's the way you love your wife. That's the way you love your children. Amen? Amen. And you got to love them with the agape love of God. And you know something to want it. You can't do that with this natural, fit, what we call filiosa, eros, this, 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 you know, this, this natural love. Right. It's got to be a supernatural love to love somebody even when they don't do right. You know, because sometimes the husband don't do right. Sometimes the wife don't do right. But somebody got to be walking in the agape love of God. You know what I mean? In, 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 in order for God to move, in order for God to bring, bring a change, because the Bible said that the unsaved husband is sanctified by the same wife or by the same husband. Amen? And the scripture tells us, and I, I don't know where I'm going to go, but the scripture <laughs> said this, that the only reason that a man or a woman can leave their husband is for adoption. If your husband not cheating on you and sleeping around, you have the legal right spiritually with God to leave it. Amen. Because he violated his covenant. Right. Because, mm. amen. And if he violated his covenant, most of the time, if a man violated his covenant one time, it's hard to stop. I'm a man, I know. If, 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 what, what, amen. If a man getting into somebody right and he like it, more than like it, if he get away with it one time, he going to go for it a second time. Right. <laughs> Unless God delivered him and set him free. I, I know what I'm talking about. I've been there. I, I mean, I've done that before I got saved. Amen? Uh, so it takes God to deliver that person. That's right. you, you understand what I'm saying? Uh, I've been somebody, I don't know, I just got in a long talk about marriage today with some people. And the person asked me the question, well, well how can I leave my husband? I said, now, that ain't my business. But, but the Bible said this is the only reason why. But he said, the only reason I allow you to give a bill of divorce is because you all can't forgive one another. 
It's not God's perfect will that families divide up. But he said, the only reason I allowed Moses to give a right of divorce is because your heart was your heart was hard. How many know that when you get hatred and resentment in your heart? The Bible says, and read Proverbs. Proverbs is a, is a serious book. It says, hey, the Proverbs tell you, you don't want to mess with an angry woman. I don't mean that by that. But when you scar her and hurt her, that, that, that's a dangerous place to live in. So if you got a wife, I encourage you to treat her right. She got to feed you. She got to you, you understand what I'm trying to tell you? Amen. So walk in love, do right by your wife, and the wife ought to do right, right by her husband. It's the right thing to do, isn't it? Amen. 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 But I've never met such a, a, a society. This society now is the opposite of what, what the older generation was. You know, and, and, and sometimes I'm at work and people just walk through, and they just amazing. They just start having conversations. I'm sitting there, I'm going to tell y'all this, and then I'm going to move on. But, but I was at work, and this, this young lady, she just, she, she come walking in. And, and so me and this other lady, we're, ta we're, 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 we're talking. And she hear us talking about family and talking about marriage. She said, well, and she just butted in. She said, well, my husband, he, you know, he 30-something years old, and he's still cheating and playing around on me. I, you know, and, and we're looking at her going, wow, I can't believe she just said this. But 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 I'm saying, but I'm saying to her, and I said to her, you know, we, 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 we gotta pray for your husband. Pray that God will deliver him. You know? And and, and, and it's sad sometimes people don't realize what they have until it's gone. You know that? God bless you with, with somebody that, that that's gonna love you, you know, no, no matter how bad you act. <laughs> I mean that go both ways. You understand that that when you got somebody gonna love you, when you act a fool, when when you when, when you know you're throwing fits and and you better hold on to them, cause everybody ain't gonna love you that way. It's very few people gonna love you that way. Some people think we're well, getting to the other side of the fence is the best way to go. Finding somebody else is gonna be much better. Whether well, you don't deal with your issues over here, you ain't gonna deal with them when you get over here. The same thing gonna come up again. Uh, uh, you might as well, by the leadership of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Deal with what you do. You know what? Try to deal with the situation. You know? Again, but I will say this: the only legal way you can leave your husband if he's calling to be committing adultery. Now. And I'll tell anybody this, this is the right thing to say. If your husband beating you upside the head and swelling your eyes up, then you need to get out of that house till he gets some help and get himself delivered, and then you try to work on your marriage. Uh, okay? So I ain't gonna, don't be no fool. Don't stay in the house and let somebody kill you. Yeah. Hey, hey, man, if they mistreating you, get some counsel. Get some help. Talk, talk to your pastor. Talk to your leader. Hey, man, uh, 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 whoever it is that you're under. Hey, man, try to get some, 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 some spiritual counsel. Hey, man, because you don't want to be in a relationship where somebody's hurting you. Amen. And I'm still not saying, I'm, I'm saying, give them a chance to get their life together. If they don't, then you just got to do what you got to do with your life. So either way, they ain't telling you to stay or leave. But what I'm telling you is this. You you got enough common sense to figure the rest of it out, don't you? Right. Amen. Amen. You, you figure the rest of it out. Because you know if you tell people to do something, then you get yourself in a whole lot of mess. So so well, what you do, you, you give them the word, and you make your decisions based upon the word of God. Amen. That's how you make your decisions. But it, it's amazing. And how do you know that, that, that's, that, that again, and I know we're talking about the spirit of fear, but that again ties back into spiritual warfare. Because the spirit of adultery and fornication comes under the spirit of lust. Fornication is having sex and not being married. Adultery is being married and having an affair with somebody else. But it's all tied into, I mean, into sexual sin. So and that's a spirit. That's a spirit. And how I many we gotta take authority over that spirit? Matthews 18 and 19 said, whatever you bind in the heavens, he said, I'll bind. Whatever you lose, I'll lose. How I many know that sometimes you gotta take authority over those spirits that are operating in your family, that's operating in your home. You gotta take authority. You gotta bind them in the name of Jesus. I don't know if the Bible says he's given Jesus a name that is above every name. So if you use that name and you take authority over the enemy, I don't know if the enemy got to flee, he got to go. So we got to use that name. And I'll tell you this, sometimes in a lot of spiritual warfare that I, I, I go through in my sleep with demons and stuff that come to try to fight me in my sleep, 
Sometimes all I got to say in the name of Jesus, I rebuke you, and they'll go. You got to use that name. That name is a weapon. That name is an authority. Amen? So you got to use that because his name is above every other name. That at his name, every knee must bow. Every tongue must confess that Jesus Christ is Lord of all. Amen? That, that, that means I don't care who it is, whatever God you may consider, or whatever God you may worship, there is no God greater than our God. Amen? Greater than Jehovah. That there's no other God greater than him. You know? Not Buddha, not a Confucius and all this. I mean, I'm just, you know, all these folks, they, they, they worship all these, these people, and most of them was human. Mohammed, he was nothing but a man. But, but how many know that we serve the most high God and he's greater than anything that we're facing in our life? Let, let, let me hurry up so we can hurry up and get out of here. Uh-uh. Let, let me finish reading this. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, of love. The word love there is agape. And of a sound. The word sound means to be whole, to be complete. Uh, amen. Uh -huh. How many know that, that, that God wants us to have a sound mind? Sound is whole. You shouldn't walk around worrying about life. Worried about what, what's going to happen next. Amen. And we said this before in Matthew 6. Where, where, where he said, if I take care of the sparrow, will I not take care of you? Are you not more valuable than, than they? Then he said to us, he said, he said, why worry? Because you can't change nothing. Why worry about life? How many know that I'm not worried about the economy? I'm not worried about the weather and the storms and all the things that are happening in our society. Amen. Amen. With, with, with I mean, South Korea, with North Korea, with, with all these nations. You know, I ain't worried about that stuff. How many know that, that, that God is going to protect his people? Amen. And no weapon formed against this nation shall prosper. Amen. If we turn our hearts back to God, God will protect us. He'll protect our families. He'll protect our homes. Amen. And so we have nothing to be afraid of. Why? Because he is Jehovah's alone. He's our peace. I know that God has already spoken the blessing over our life. Amen. He's already, and I said before, the word blessing means to speak the benediction. God has spoken the end over your life. All you got to do is wait on, I mean, wait and be patient on the Lord, and he's going to bring his word to pass in due season. Amen. So if you don't have nothing to be afraid of, I don't care what's happening, don't be afraid. You got to stand strong in faith. The Bible said we walk by faith but not by sight. Amen. Amen. Scripture said we're to call those things which be not as though they were. I don't care what our society looks like. I don't care what our economy looks like. I don't care what our government is doing and what's happening in our societies. If we'll stand on the word of God, God can turn the circumstances around. So we shouldn't be afraid. Shouldn't be afraid of nothing. Amen. And guess what? I'm not afraid of it. And then when I lay down, I lay down in peace. When I rise up, I rise up in peace. And I'm going to trust the Lord. How many of y'all going to trust the Lord? Amen. Amen. How many of you going to keep your faith and your confidence? Amen. So I want to encourage you. Don't be afraid. Don't give up. Don't quit, man. Even though life might be, sometimes we, we get hard blows. Sometimes we get hit. Ooh, have you ever been hit and feel like you lost all the breath about you? I've been hit like that before. You go, you ever have somebody hit you in the chest playing around? And you just go, man, you go, what? <laughs> and then you lose, did you lose breath, you lose life. But, but, but how do you know that God will still take us through? So just because you've been here, just because you're going through circumstances, amen, in your life, don't give up and do not quit. And because God is on your side. And, and, and you don't have to be afraid of that. So for the first thing I want you to know is in 2 Timothy 1 and 7, the first thing you need to know, God didn't give you the spirit of fear. So when it comes up on you, take authority though. You know, you got people that got phobias and, and people. Have you ever had, anybody ever had a panic attack? Boy, that's one of the worst feelings in the world. Isn't it? You feel like you're dying. How many know that God don't want you to have that kind of stuff? He wants you to take authority over. So don't, 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 don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Okay, let, let's open my Bibles real quick too. Let, let's go to Ephesians chapter 6. And uh, we're going we gonna, we gonna to move on here. But I'm going to read some more stuff here in just a minute. Oh, this is another book of the Apostle Paul. Dude. I'm going to start with 6 and 10. Now, first of all, how many know that we are in spiritual warfare? Amen. Now, if you think the church is where you're supposed to come drink coffee, eat donuts, and, and, and <laughs> sit at the table and eat lunch all day, then you sadly mistaken. We are in spiritual warfare. If you think this is the place we're supposed to come and just sing and dance and shout.
shout and lift our head. We do that. But how we know that? that we, we, we're in a battle. The devil is trying to kill you. You need to know it. And ain't no sense in us telling you, oh, everything ain't going to be all right. When you get saved, I check what you said that. When you get saved, everything ain't going to be okay. Yeah. He tell me I had to go through all this. <laughs> How do you know that when you make a change, the devil get mad. Mm -hmm. And he's in all kind of obstacles and things in your way to try to stop you. Right. And the truth is, he don't care who he is. I use my pastor, y'all said that the closest thing he uses is the one you love. It'll be your wife, it'll be your husband, it'll be your children, it'll be your brothers and sisters and children. David said, David said, he said, he said, it would have been all right if it wasn't my brothers and sisters. But Lord, he said, what even my enemies that tried to kill me. He said, it was the ones that I, I, I had sweet communion with, the ones I sat down and ate with and I talked with. He said, them the ones trying to kill me. And, 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 and that's something. And remember this. <laughs> Jesus. The Bible said he came to his own and his own rejected him, right? So Jesus' greatest warfare was not with the sinner, but his greatest warfare was with religious people. That was supposed to be, if I could say, his brothers and sisters in Christ. There was the one that tried to kill Jesus. Mm. And, and, and a friend of mine has always said this. He said, people think the devil at the club. Devil ain't at the club. He already know he got them. He went, he, he come right here in the church. He don't, he don't want them folks out there. He got them. He want to come in the church and start confusion, divide, and separate the church. So he come in, he sit up, and he look, unless the church is anointed and spiritually discerning. Amen. Because you know you got a lot of traditional, and, and I ain't got nothing against the business church, a lot of traditional and uh, uh, establishments. That there is so much mess going on in there. Amen. Nobody's spiritual. Nobody's dealing with issues in the church. So you got fornication, adultery, lying, stealing, and all kinds of stuff going on in some of these organizations because spiritual leadership is not set up in the house by the Holy Ghost to discern what's going on in that house. And, and most most preachers preach what people like so they can keep a big crowd and have a big old checkbook. But I know that God didn't call us to preach what folk like. He called us to preach the gospel, the uncompromised gospel of Jesus Christ. And that means that we're supposed to walk in righteousness. We're supposed to preach righteousness and truth. Amen. And we're supposed to, the Bible said that the gospel is good for correction, for reproof. That's what the gospel is for. It comes to correct us and to bring us into order as God's people. To teach us, the strict and Timothy said, is to train us in righteousness. How do you know we got to be trained in right? We don't know how to live right on our own. So we got to be trained. That's why we get the word of God and we find out what the word of God said. The Bible said, love those that hate you. Amen. Pray for those that spitefully misuse you. Amen. Amen. The word of God is for training purposes to teach us how to treat one another and how to love our brothers and sisters. So the word of God is for, for the training of the church. Paul also called the word of God the sword of the spirit. Now you don't get no sword for no reason, do you? Really called for me. That, that means you gotta go fight the enemy. When he's coming against your mind, you gotta speak the word. What is that? Hebrews 4 and 12. That says the word of God is quick, powerful, sharper than any two-headed sword. How that it pierces and it cuts and it divides and, and uh, asunder the spirit, the flesh, and the soul. So when the word of God is spoken, it comes out. Amen, for a reason to, amen, to, to, to separate spirit and flesh. The Bible said that the word of God is a discerner of the heart. I mean, that, that, that God's word is powerful. And when it come out, it'll, it, 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 it'll cut everything out of you that's not like Jesus. It also would have cut the devil's head off. Of course, you know, his spirit can't really cut his head off, but it'll cast him out. The Bible said Jesus cast demons out with his word. So the word of God is supposed to be like a sword, a two-headed sword that cuts. Amen. So we're in spiritual warfare. And so when these spirits like fear, and, and, and let me say this, and we didn't say this earlier, that, that, uh, the spirit of fear also carries this, uh, let me see, torment. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's one of the characteristics of fear. Anxiety. Nightmare. 
phobias and fears, heart attack, lack of faith, doubt and unbelief. All these things are connected to the spirit of fear. I know that when you live your life under anxiety and stress and worry, that's the spirit of fear. Y'all remember when Jesus was in the boat and the, and, and the big old waves came over the boat? And the Bible said the disciples was afraid and they woke Jesus up. And the Bible said that Jesus rebuked them and said, why are you of uh, real faith? And the Bible said Jesus rose up and he rebuked the storm and he commanded peace. Amen. To the ocean and to the waves. Have you know that instead of being afraid, we're supposed to take authority. One of the words for, for, for authority is, is the Greek word, uh, um, not exousia. Exousia means to have the legal right to operate in something. How do you know that, 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 that Jesus, when he was raised from the dead, he gave us the legal right to operate in the authority of the spirit. Amen. He gave us the legal right. Amen. He gave us the legal right to function, the legal right to cast out demons, the legal right to heal the sick, the legal right to walk in righteousness and, and, and the peace of God. So Jesus, through Jesus dying, he gave us the path. To, amen. He gave us the path to righteousness and peace and, and to walk in fellowship with God. That's why he came. To give us the legal right to take authority over the devil. So that means when the devil show up in your house, you got the legal right to cast him out. Because Jesus gave you the authority. Amen. That's just like a policeman. Amen. We, amen. They got a badge on them. We recognize their authority. You see that police, how many know when you see that policeman down the, about a couple of blocks away from you, you start slowing their car down. Because you, you reverence that authority. Amen. Because they have given you a ticket. They got the legal right to give you a ticket. Amen. And it's the same way Jesus has given us the legal right through the government of heaven to cast out demons, to heal the sick, to raise the dead. That's what the Bible said. He's given us that power. He has given us the victory over fear. And, and another one is the fear of death. How many you know some people live with their life in fear of death? I ain't going to get on no plane. I'm so scared. Uh, a, prophet, a prophet, a friend of mine called me from, 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 from Atlanta. She said, prophet? I'm going to fly to New Jersey. I said, Prophet is Diane, you're going to fly? She said, you know I don't fly. <laughs> I said, Diane, get on that plane and go home. I said, God going to bring you back. He ain't going to let you go all the way up there and don't bring you back home. Amen. I mean, he going to protect you. So she getting out when she, she, she coming out of that spirit of fear. You know, I mean, we almost be told it about nothing. And, and you know, and I know sometimes Christian folks, y'all go, Preaching some of the stuff you said just man, that's just dramatic. It's just you 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 just you just too far out there. What, what you mean? I, I wouldn't care whatever. I mean, hey amen. The whole building can catch on fire. God will cause me to walk out. Amen. That's how much confidence I got in my God. Amen. He did it with the Hebrew boys when they put him in the I mean when they threw him in the fire of furnace and they were trying to kill him, amen, and burn them up. They heated the fire up seven times hotter. How many know that God preserved them in the midst of the fire? The Bible said when Nebuchadnezzar looked, amen, in there, he saw the fourth man that was lacking to the son of, the, to the son of man. Isn't that interesting? I always ask myself, how did they know that was Jesus? <laughs> how did they know? But when they looked in the fire, they saw Jesus. And I know God said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. So if you're in the fire, let me know Jesus is in there with you. And he's going to let you burn up. He ain't going to let nothing kill you. He ain't going to let nothing destroy you. So don't be afraid. Okay? Don't be afraid. All right, y'all. We got, we got about 10 more minutes here. And I'm going to cut it off. I just want to read Ephesians. <laughs> 6 and 10. Finally, my brother. Now, he's talking to the church. He's talking to sinner folk. He said, Found in my brethren, be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord. And in the power of his might. That's interesting. What do this word strong mean? I just want, I just want to look at it. Uh, I'm just going to hit this right here. So y'all going to hear something here. And do not marvel. In dunamau, in dunamau, that's the Greek word. In dunamau, and what, 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 what do it mean here? 